Hey guys, this is another tutorial on image editing for bead sprites. This one is more for images than sprites. The last one I did was more for hand replacing a palette. This one is more for getting Photoshop to do it for you. Kind of a manual way of doing what the programs do, but you have a little bit more control over it. Um, so you're going to go up to image again, mode, index color. And this time it's not going to give you the option of exact because the palette is going to be really massive. Um, you're going to look at these options. One is local perceptual, local selective, and local adaptive. Perceptual is more about like what our eyes will pick up in a photo. Uh, selective is a broader palette, less defined. If you do it on a sprite, you can see really well. Um, what it does, it'll it'll make it look like your sprite, but it won't be definitive. You won't have, um, like on this guy, you won't be able to pick out like really fine details. He'll look kind of faded in a way. I think that's the best way to explain it. Adaptive is a more definitive palette. It'll pick out the most prominent tones in a, in a picture and it will eliminate the um, less prominent ones. So in selective you might end up with an even amount of say reds and blues whereas in adaptive if red is more prominent you will end up with more red tones in your palette and then the blue might be eliminated altogether. Uh, make sure you take off transparency when you're doing this because you don't need it unless you took and you've taken out the background which I haven't so Forced, I'm going to go over this in a second. Um, dither is, I guess, kind of like tapering. It blends the sections together. As you can see, hopefully, I'll pull that down. My diffusion is on 50%. Um, this really depends on the picture and depends on your preferences. Pattern really uh, usually does a really good job of blending. So you can use, like, I've got seven colors here. And it actually looks pretty similar to the photo for that little of colors. Pattern is really um, difficult to bead though. Like if you have diffusion or you have none, you're just basically going to be able to bead these sections, basically filling. Whereas pattern, uh, you're going to have to bead all around that. And it can be bothersome, but it's worth it sometimes. Anyways, um, I think 10 should be good. Um, so uh, if you want Photoshop to, to pick out colors for you, you just keep it on none and you would hit OK and whatever one you picked, perceptual or selective or adaptive, doesn't really matter. The master ones do weird things sometimes, so I never really use them. But anyways, so if you want Photoshop to do it, you pick out none. If you want to pick out the colors, you can go down to custom and this blank screen will pop up. You click a square and you get to pick your colors. It's really handy too here to turn off preview if you want to pick certain colors from the photo. It doesn't really work with this one too well, but I'll show you anyways. Um, so you click, click on the picture and it'll pick that color. Skin tone. Some hair tones. We go to black and a white. And you can pick as many as you want. Even if you only have 10, if you end up picking up 30, it'll just change this to your palette. So, oh. This is in the colors I picked. I should do it in none. And then you can see how bad it will look, but um, that's the difference between none and pattern and stuff like that. It still looks okay, even though I didn't pick out the best colors, but you can go down to custom. And the cool thing is if you don't want Photoshop to do it and you don't want to do it, you can pick out, um, there's this button here, save. So you can save your own palette. So you can go down to custom and 
get a blank one. Let's see, go none, custom, blank one, and you can go and pick out all the colors that you want to use from your Perler palette if you have a Perler palette or Hama or Nabi or Artcal is the new one. Um, so you can pick out the colors you want from your Perler palette and it will do its best to match them. I have saved one already, uh, but you can go in here and you can load all the colors in and then you can save it and then you can use it in the future. So this is the Perler palette that I have. It's missing some pinks, but I don't really use them anyways, so it's not really a problem for me. So it still looks kind of bad, but if you go down to Diffusion, it starts to look uh, closer to what a um, an automatic program would do. And you can also as I said, make a different palette and load it. I'm not sure why I picked this one, or why I made this one in the first place. But oh. And if you have a lot of colors, and then you go to a, a smaller palette, you're going to have to change the amount of your colors back. So there is my um, palette. And this allows you to do um, kind of different different looks. Um, I think look pretty cool, but that's more in my style, so it might look really bad to some other people. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them on my YouTube. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook, and if you want any more tutorials, let me know.